Hello, hello, everyone. How y'all doing tonight? So tonight, y'all gonna see me with my patch on. You know, y'all, y'all know my situation. So uh, the patch actually makes it a little bit better for me. So as far as my uh, my eye gets really irritated. So uh, I'm gonna just. Wait on here for a little bit. Start seeing some people coming in before I get started. This is a much requested. Um, people have been since I talked about the buttons in my last live. Um, I've had person after person in my inbox asking me about the button maker asking me about the button template so i figured that the best thing was going to be able was going to be for me to just go live <clears throat> talk about the button maker see if y'all had any questions um i did put the button maker in the um in the group so for those of y'all that are in the group, the button maker is listed there, and I can probably pull it up and put it in the chat for um, for the broadcast. But um, I also went ahead and let me go ahead and start sharing my screen here. So I'm going to just go through the whole process, okay? And let's see. And I'm going to share the screen. Uh oh. Y'all hear some feedback? I'm trying to make sure. That when I get ready, are y'all hearing an echo or anything like that? It was a little feedback for a second. But is everything out? You hearing feedback? Everybody hearing feedback? I had a little camera away so that um maybe um that was kind of something back to the mic. So I hope that y'all can hear me fine. There's some y'all were saying that's better now. Okay. So okay, I got I, I hear good. Okay. All right. So what I did was um because we had in the academy, we have the 178 template. The class 178 is the button, okay? But if you previously downloaded the button template, it was just to make the image for the button. So I went back and I updated that so that you start off when you open up with the mock-up. Because, you know, <clears throat> I was saying that, no, there's no Zoom room for this. There's no Zoom room for this. So this is just live um, in the group and on YouTube. So um, since on the 178 template, there was no mock-up that was included, I went back and I and the mock-up that we have is in the automizer. So what I did was I kind of backtracked and I took the the temp the mock-up from the automizer and I back backed up and made a mock-up for the template, the smart template. So when you go, I'm not sure if it's uploaded now. I was uploading it before I started this. But um, when you go into your 178 
class, if you have class 178, this new mock-up and template will be there, okay? Um, so I made a few changes to it. So when you open it up, it'll open to the mock-up. And then now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to update this uh, template. I'm going to show you two ways because I did do this for two different um, different ways that you can update this. So the first thing we're going to do is go into the button. Well, I'm going to double click on the button and it's going to bring us to our button image. Okay. And once our button image is open, you're going to see that you're going to have two options. It's button image one and button image two. Okay. So the button image one, let me turn it on. Button image one is going to be for any template that you have done in the academy where you have a background and you have a foreground. You can take that background image and you can switch it out and you can put your foreground image and switch it out and have your button image and that's for any template. So if you've done any design that you've created and you wanna create a button for that, if it's a birthday party, if it's a memorial and you have your background and your foreground, you can populate these two smart objects and you're going to have your button for that design. Okay. That's your button one image. Now I'm going to turn off the button one and go to button image two. This is the actual template that was there for class 178, where you can actually design everything right here. You can create your background you can change your text, you can change your photo, you can create all of that right here and have your button image, okay? So I'm not gonna go through flipping all of this stuff because if you have class 178, there's a video for that and you have this and you should be able to do that and go through this just fine, okay? And if you haven't done it, you can watch the video. <laughs> what I am going to do, because it's the quickest and shortest method, is I'm going to go ahead and I have some buttons that I'm actually making. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use this where I'm going to change out my background and my foreground and have me another button. Okay. So let me open up my folder. I'm going to put the folder over here. And so just for, like I said, very quickly, if you have any background and any foreground, you can make this button quick. Double click on that background. It's going to open up. You're going to drop your background in there. I'm going to say enter to lock that in. I'm going to turn this one off and I'm going to close this up. And let me turn this image on and turn the button image to off. And then I'm going to open up my foreground. I'm going to drop my foreground image in here. I'm going to turn that one off. Or delete it if that's your preference. And my foreground is in here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my... Oh, it's a bug. Um, I'm going to turn on my safe area, okay? This tells me where I can move this foreground around and how big I can resize my foreground, okay? So I'm going to do a control T and I'm going to make my foreground just a little bit bigger. And if you see those lines come up, that middle, that's the middle there. And there's the middle there. So now I have it square in the center of my image. I'm going to hit enter, and then I'm going to turn my safe area off, okay? Once I've done this, my button image is complete. And what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to do a file, save a copy, or 
Let me show you. You could do from here do button image, right click, quick export as PNG, which is going to be your quickest route. I already have the image saved here. And um, so I'm not going to save it again, but you save it in that location, whatever your location is, and you have your button image, which is what you're going to need to actually create your buttons. Okay. So then when I close out of this, this is going to take me back to my mock up. And it's gonna update. And there's my mock-up. And then all I can, and then I can go right here to the button. Make sure you select the folder. And then I can do quick export as PNG. The button. Do save. And there's my button mock-up. Okay. So either way, if you have the automizer. You have the button mock-up there that you can go in and you can change that if you're doing a design in the in the automizer. If you don't have the automizer or you're just doing one simple button, this template will be in class 178. Okay. And so that's it as far as making your button. You either make your design from scratch or you bring in a background, you bring in a foreground, and you create that um, button image, you export it as a PNG, and then you're ready to make your buttons, okay? So that's it on Photoshop. Okay, so the next thing that I do, I know that some of you from... Um, it from some of you from other previous lives and just from talking to y'all in VIP class, uh, some of y'all cut y'all's um, some of y'all cut y'all's button images by hand. Chrissy, don't do that. I don't do no cutting by hand. I use my Cricut to cut my button images. Okay, so I'm gonna go to Cricut. And I'm going to show you because I have some already um, printed and everything. But I'm going to show y'all from the beginning how to go through and a little second now. Open up. And I want to call an Academy member. Um, if you are an Academy member, it should be in your four to eight. Uh, it should be in you like that for hours. Okay. If not, you can go to products and, and in the and you can search one of them, and then you should be able to find the uh, 178 class. But it, if you're a member, it should be in your four to eight unlocking. If you've already unlocked it, you'll have access. If not, you would have to go ahead and unlock it if you want to get it early. Um, and then for the saving the button, the, the, the button saves at I don't know what size it saves at. I can, whatever that that board is saved as, that's what size the image saves as. Well, you're gonna see when I bring it in to actually print it, that's when you size it to the size that you want it to be. Okay. I have a the two and a half inch button 
so when I bring mine in, which I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So you, if you're using Cricut, you can upload, go to upload, and you're going to go to upload image. And I'm going to grab my button image. And I'm going to say complex. And then I'm going to do continue. And I'm going to do apply and continue because it's already got its background is gone. And I'm going to save this as a print, then cut image. And I'm going to say upload. Now, when I bring this image and I select my image and say add to canvas, it comes very large. No matter what I've saved images in, in my previous programs, whether I've created it in Silhouette and brought it into Cricut or created it in Photoshop and brought it in, it has it always comes in ginormous. I don't know why, it just always does. So I always expect that it's going to come in. For my two and a half inch, um, and it may, you know what? It is the two and a quarter size that I have. That's the size that I have. Um, what I'm going to do is for, to make it, I will go in and I make sure that this lock is locked. And then I put in two. 0.56 and hit enter. And that actually is the size that I need. You want whatever button you're making, you want your button to be about a quarter inch. And the way that the template is designed with the safe space is that you have about a quarter inch bleed because that's the part that wraps around your button whenever you're making the button. Okay, so and I'm going to show y'all all of that. I'm going to actually um, make the buttons and show y'all the whole process of making the button. So from here, I know that when I save this at that 2.56 size, I can duplicate this six times and I can see it just on um, sheet. So I'm duplicating six and then one time to six images, take it. okay? So I already got to that process on another screen. So I'm going to close this one out. And I'm going to bring that screen over that I was working in previously. Okay. So for the print process for these, I'm going to go back to print. And I'm going to just show you, for my button images, I use my Koala paper. You all, you all who've been with me and know me know that I love the Koala photo paper. Um, so I know I'm like little right now, but I use the Koala photo paper. I use the 30 pound and the eight and a half by 11 sheets of the Koala paper, okay? Um, let me show you the printed button, the buttons, because I've already printed them. When I print, I always use the system dialog, okay, and I go to print. And I print one more sheet of these for these, what I'm doing. And I print on my ET15000 and I go to my preferences. I have a preset for this Koala Glossy Paper, which is my party favorites preset. So I select that, but I will show you that it has paper type selected as photo paper glossy. I put my quality at high and that's it. And then I say, okay, and I'm going to do one copy of that and say print. Okay, now when it prints, these uh, this is how those images print. I know I'm like little bitty on the screen right now, 
And look, I'm going a, I'm to a see if I stop sharing my screen. Okay. And then, so you can see that on that glossy paper, these, these images come out really nice. And I love how they, um, how they look once you get them, you know, the buttons finished. So they print out really nice. And yeah, and create creations. I see uh, expressions. I see you say you have two different kinds of circle cutters. Um, me and those little circle cutters, we don't get along. I, I don't know why, but we don't get along. So I I use my uh, Cricut. It's quicker and easier for me and less me tearing up uh, 15 sheets of paper. <laughs> 15 sheets of paper. Um, so... Um, for my um when i when i cut I, there is a photo paper setting in cricut and that works perfectly to cut this paper okay so i do select the photo paper i use a a light grit mat light grit mat and so I load that up. Put that over there. And I'm going to switch the camera to my desktop whenever I start making the buttons. Oh, okay. Well, I don't have that. I got this Cricut and I got this Silhouette right here. And those are two things I have. Um, and that's what we're coming. So, uh, go ahead and get this loaded up. And once that's loaded, I said I would do this live so y'all could see the time frames that it takes. So now it's cutting. And let's see. I'm gonna get my um get my other camera ready. Okay, let's get this other camera ready for y'all to be able to see my desktop. So, y'all remember last time, I couldn't, I didn't get it together to show y'all my desktop. So, I'm showing y'all my desktop now. Can everybody see my desktop? Oh, no, no, no. Cutting with scissors? Oh, no. I can't even. No, I ne I never did the scissors. I always use my Cricut for it, every time. All right, so I can see. Okay, and I think I wanna let's see what I wanna do. I'm going to see if I can make this one the bigger one so y'all can see. Oh, okay. I am going to mute my other mic while I'm working on this one. Let's see. Oh, that was... Okay, can y'all hear me? You have buttons everywhere. Can you can y'all hear me? Okay. Oh so I got my buttons cut. I got six of them cut here. 
And I'm going to turn this over. And I'm going to peel that away from here. And take all of these little images off. And there I have my B6 button. So, because I'm like a little bit of a perfectionist, this is what I do. And it just makes it easier and it makes sure that all of my buttons are going to be um, okay. Do y'all hear feedback now? Because I was hearing a little bit of feedback, but now I don't hear. But can y'all still hear me? Yes, y'all can hear me. I'm waiting. Got a little bit. It's better. It sounds better now. I know it's a, uh, the sound quality is probably a little bit different because it's on my it's on my phone. But so anyway, this is what I do when I start making my buttons. Okay, so that. All of my images will kind of be lined up the same and I can, um, and that's just me because that's how I like myself to be. So I get my, but I get one of the button images and I turn it over. I put a little piece of double-sided tape on there and then I put that image down on my working surface, okay? So then I take, my the first piece which is your little silver piece you get and then i can put it over that image and line it up where i want it to be and then i put a little piece of tape on there and i take my button image and then i line this image up with the but the image that's below it okay so that helps me two things when it lines it up makes them all be lined up the same and when I actually put it on my button maker, it keeps it from sliding around because for in that little in the little groove, you'll see that when I bring the button maker up here, that it actually is like a little bit smaller. So sometimes it can move around if you don't have it adhered to this plate. And once you put it in there and you go to press it, it'll shift sometimes. Okay. So by doing that, that keeps that image fixed to there and it's going to make all my images the same so i don't like do this and then put it on the button maker and then make it and then do another one i do all of these first so i put these on and this has been the way that i find that as far as working efficiently and in a timely manner is the best time uh for me and I just keep on going until I get all of the little circles complete that I want to get complete. I'm not going to do all the ones that I have to do because I have to do quite a few of these. But I'm going to do these six on camera. And... And then put these here, okay? So then I have those all finished. And then I'm going to take this last one that I just did that last one. I'm going to put this on the top of that. And then I'm going to take the one off of my um, surface. And I'm going to line it up and put it on there. And that's all six of those. Ones. Okay. Um. The button machine that I'm using is from Amazon. Um, I'll share. I'll share it on my screen when I finish doing this. Okay. So this is my button maker. 
Okay. Let me see. Y'all can see. Kind of y'all can see from over the top. This is my butt maker. I'll give y'all another view of it when I switch my cameras back. Uh, the double sided tape that I'm using is Ad Tech. It's Ad Tech. And um, yeah. So, and I have. I have su subscriptions for everything, y'all. I have a subscription on Amazon for my ad tech tape. So I get uh tape, double-sided tape every month. I have I do the subscribe and save. So I get um I get double-sided tape, I get cricket mats, I get uh koala paper, I get like I have everything um Amazon subscribe and say, and, and like I just got my delivery. My delivery. It's um, ad tech. Uh, it's a d tech t e c h. The thing is with it, some of it it has been like difficult to find. So, uh, I mean, like sometimes some months they're like it's on back order or they canceled it because they didn't have it. So any type, any type of double-sided tape will work, though. It doesn't just have to be this. I have, like, that scotch, um, the big roller. You can use that. Um, I have this um, double-sided tape. This is full mark. But it's all different types of double-sided tape. Any tape runner you can use. So when I get ready to start doing my buttons, I like to... Um, like the reason I do all of those first is because I want to just keep going when I get them. So I put a back in, you put your back in with your pin side that you clip down. I line up the circle. There's a little circle. I don't know if you can see it. Mm, there's like a little circle right there. Anyway, I line that circle up with this little groove that's right here. Um, and then I switch the sides and I put my image. Let me get my little plastic doohickey out. You put your image in and you see how there's like, I don't know if y'all can see that. But when you look in there, it's some space around the size of where the image is, okay? So if the image doesn't fully fill that up, then it can shift. And that's why I put the tape on there, because my image won't shift once I do that, okay? So I'm going to put the plastic in, then I move that over, press. Bring it up. When you bring it up, your image is going to be stuck on there. And then I slide that over. When I slide it over, I put my next image in and then press. And now my other image is already in. So now I have a button that's done and my other image is in there. Take it out. Put my back in. Press that up. Go back. Put my second image in, put my plastic on, press, button done, image in, press, back, slide, oh. image in, plastic on, press, button done, slide, Back in, press, slide, image in, plastic on, press, and button done. Press, back, slide, image in, plastic on, press. Button done. Button. Press. 
Inhale. Okay, so I stick buttons done, and when you look at them, they're all uniform, they all look the same. My image is in the center, and everything looks great. Okay. <laughs> Yes, you can. So now I am going to let's see, switch back over here. Let's get solo right now. And stop this cam. And Unmute. Now y'all back here me over here. I'll move this mic out the way. Yes, I have spent quite a um I have spent quite a bit of time making buttons. So when I do this from start to finish, I can make a hundred buttons in 30 minutes. Okay. So I've gotten pretty great at doing the buttons. And I love doing the buttons. You see this, 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 this part of it? That's stress relief. So this is the button maker, the full thing. I told y'all I'd give you a better look at it. And um thank you, Alicia. That's how we want to be working around here. Um, easy and efficient. And let's see. Let me bring up a new tab. And let me go to Amazon. I actually can... Okay, and I'll share my screen. Y'all should see my screen. I'll go to orders. And I'm going to do button maker. And actually, I've showed y'all this button maker before. And um, that's right, you can. I've made um, buttons on site. So this button maker is now 158.09. When I first started sharing this particular button maker, it was like 120. And I don't know what's happened in the last few weeks. I guess button making is on the rise because this button maker has gone up to 158. But it is still a great investment. You said, um, what should you be charging for buttons? I charge $3 a piece for buttons. So if you look, you pay $158 for this button maker, you get a thousand pieces with that button. You can make up to a thousand buttons with that initial purchase. I charge $3 for my buttons. And like I, I said in my previous live, I do not, I, I, I don't offer like on memorials, I don't offer the ribbons anymore. Me and the ribbons, we don't get alone. Um, we, we just, we have a, uh, we don't even have a love-hate relationship. We have a hate-hate relationship because 
I do not like them and they do not like me. So I do buttons for my memorial uh, packages. That has been working out great. They have loved the buttons. I think that the act actually the buttons they last longer. They're more durable than actually the ribbons as well. So um, I offer the buttons and usually for the memorial packages, sports packages and all of that. Um, I mean, people are ordering 50 to 100 at a time. And usually if they order, if they order 50, I will bump the, do it from $3 to 275. If they order 100, I do 250. So 100 buttons, 250. And like I said, I can make 100 buttons in 30 minutes. So 30 minutes, $250. So are there any other questions? Because that was what I was coming on to show y'all today. This is a quick live uh, demonstration. Um, it will remain up on YouTube and, um, what, what were you charging for your buttons initially? After the initial set of a thousand buttons, like for this one is the 2.25, you can put in 2.25 buttons. And I think the most um, that I've been able to order are 500. Um, yeah, let's see. This is the machine. Here's one that is 125. It's a different brand, so I don't know. But there's like, here's a 200 set, a 300 set. Um, 225, 200. Mm. I think, and I don't know, I don't see the 500. I'll have to go look at my purchases and see if I can find that one. I don't remember if I did it on this one or the my business one, but. You can see uh, two hundred sets, forty bucks, and and it, it's it's um I think for five hundred I I paid pay like forty five dollars, forty five or fifty. You were charging um two dollars, yeah, definitely go up, definitely go up, because I have not had any um body um like. Well, I give the three dollar price. It's been fine, and you know, for me, I tell y'all, the price is the price. We not we not changing. It is what it is. I just go down the more they the more they order. <laughs> hmm. Thank you, Samella. All right, so y'all should be set to do these buttons. Again, um, I don't know if the template has finished uploading yet. Um, I don't know if the template's finished uploading yet, but I did put this new template for the button with the mock-up. Um, it's the same basic template. I only, all I did was add the option to only use your foreground and your background. And I um, use the, I gave you those two options. And then, so you have the mock up. Oh, thank you, Angela. I know that's you, girl. I have never used the all metal ones. The only ones I've ever done are these. So I don't know. But I know these are these are buttons that I made last year for my kids for basketball. 
these buttons. Let me see. Stop screen. I made these buttons last year for basketball season. It's got a glare on it, but they still intact. Still intact. Yeah, that's what I have. So that's all I've ever used. But all right, y'all go and enjoy y'all's night. Thank y'all for signing on with me. And, um, you know, make buttons, y'all. I promise. <laughs> and y'all can make buttons for anything. At all of your sports events, your graduation, it has, the buttons have been really good sellers for me. So make the buttons. That's how to add it. Uh, Janice, you don't have to add the button to the uh, to the automizer. It's already part of the automizer. So let me um, share my screen. I think that, and let me just, I'll, I'll do this just because I know this is a question that some of y'all have had. So I thought I was about to go, but you got me. Um, but y'all know I don't mind. So, okay. For the automizer, the button is already part of the automizer. What it is a not what it's not a part of is um it's not a part of the mock-ups that you click at the bottom of the automizer, okay? So the way that the automizer works is you have um, you have the option to use the pre-made, and I'm going to just, uh, I was demoing some um, in a one-on-one -on -one with this one, the the, um, the other day, so I'm going to just go swim. So you have the option um, to use the preloaded mock-ups that are there for the automizer. So Shannon has made some just generic mock-ups that she feel like those are the basic items that you would have for graduation or a party or a memorial. And then you customize your mock-up the way that you want your mock-up to be. So when you have it, uh, if you have the latest version of the automizer, if you have the full version of the automizer, um, then the button has already been added. So what you would do is like if you open one of the mockups and say this mockup doesn't have the button on it, but I want this but I want the button to be on this you know this mockup that I'm giving to my customer. Then I'm going to go into uh, um, my automizer, not to open. I'm going to do file, place embedded, and I'm going to go to my automizer files. And then I'm going to go find that button. The button is the 01 button product mockup. Okay. And so I'm going to select that and I'm going to do place. And now that button is going to be in this new mock-up. Okay. And then I can place it wherever I want that button to show up at. I can put it down here in this corner. Now, if, because I already updated this. Now, what you have to do once you add, you can't see my screen. Oh. Which screen did I share? Did I share the wrong screen? Let me see. Stop screen. Present. Share screen. Share screen. Entire screen. Yep, I did. I shared the wrong one. So i just been talking and showing y'all stuff. Okay. <laughs> um. 
Okay, so Bria, if you buy the automizer, there are videos that come with the automizer to teach you how to use and update the automizer. There are also um, YouTube videos that have been done that um, show you how to use and update the automizer. And then coaches in the academy, uh, myself included, we show you, we have uh, weekend classes that show you how to, <laughs> that show you how to use the automizer. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to go back and show y'all what I did since y'all didn't see nothing that I did since I was on the wrong screen. Okay. Um, and then no, you um for is that express that's nodular. Um, you do not have to buy the template if you have class 178. If you're an academy member and you have class 178, I'm just adding the new template to class 178. You'll just have to go to 178 once it finishes uploading and download the new file. Okay. Um, so now can everybody see my screen because I just was going on and on and y'all ain't see nothing. Okay. So I'm gonna go back. <laughs> um, so if you want to add it, is there, okay, great, great, great. I wasn't sure if it had finished uploading or not. Okay. So any product that is not because we're right now we're adding products to the automizer so every time those um products get added we we there necessarily won't be a mock-up that's created that has those new products just like with the button and the capri sun and all of that those have not been specifically added to these bigger mock-ups um like for our different classes that we do, some of those are have been added. But um, yes, class 178 is available as a standalone. It is. Um, so you can, what you want to do is say this model. And I'm going to add two products here because I know one hasn't been updated. One has. If I want to add the button to this mock-up or any one of the other mock-ups that's there. I'm going to go and I'm going to do file and I'm going to say place embedded. And I, it's good. I'm going to open up my automizer files. Okay. So I'm going to go find that mock-up. You want to go find that mock-up. So here we have the button. We had a Capri Sun. So I can add any one of these products to this mock-up. Okay, so I'm going to add the button. Well, you know what? Because the button's already updated, I'm going to add this Capri Sun. Okay, so I'm going to add the Capri Sun. I'm going to say place embedded, and I'm going to place that. And it still has my previous design that I was working on. So I started doing a new design, and I'm going to just put this over here just to move it out the way. And I'm going to say enter. Now, the, the key here is that when you first bring this in and you look over here in your layers panel, okay, this Capri Sun, which is right here that I brought in, it does not have a link here. It came in as a smart object. So if you bring in a product, it's going to come in as a smart object. In order for this to work and update, when we do update all modified content, we have to relink this to our automizer file so that our automizer recognizes it and says, hey, I need to update it to these images that we're working with right now. Okay. So what you do is you right click and you say relink to file. And then I go in here and I go back to my Capri Sun and I'm going to relink it to this Capri Sun mock-up. And then it's going to change from a smart object and now my link is there. Okay. So now I can double click into my object 
and then I can go and I can say update all modified content. And then I have to actually click into the, um, once it finishes this one. So it's gonna take a little bit. But if you, if you do not relink it, okay? And you just go in there and you click update all modified content, it's gonna update it. But when you get back to the beginning, it's going to revert to the previous images because you didn't link it to the new files. So now I can go into my Capri Sun label and open it up and I can say right click, update all modified content. And now it's going to update to my new images that I put that I started working in this design with. Okay, so there we go. And now it's updated and I can go back and close this out. So what will happen is it was like, but we recognize that it needs to be updated or try to relink it, it's going to flip it back. And then I say yes, and now it's updated, and it's linked to my um, to my um, to my design that's going on here. Okay, so that's how you bring in a product, like any of those products. If you wanted to turn this one off, if you wanted to turn the that banner off and bring in one of the step and repeat banner and you wanted to use that, you just say file place embedded, any of those products, you just bring those in and then relink it to the file. And then you can update all modified content and it will stay the same. Okay. So that's how that works. Okay. Yeah. So if you have the automizer and you want to, and you use the button template, like you just open the button template and use it so you can have a mock up, you can do that. Um, I did the class 178 so that if you're just trying to do a one off button for somebody, you don't have to go into the automizer and update all of those things. And so that any template that you've worked in um, that you have a background and a foreground for, you can go pop those in and have you a mock-up and the print file for it, okay? So, all right. Okay, so this time I'm gonna go for real, y'all. No, if y'all have any questions, y'all know I will stick around. But I did this was for this demo, and I can't talk that long because y'all know my my mouth. But um, uh, I wanted to I wanted to show y'all this because I've been getting a lot of inboxes on it, and now that I have done this live, now I can just like go refer to this video okay so all right you're welcome you're welcome tracy welcome alicia your blue is printing purple now that's not my forte the doctor could probably help you with that that's not a mean thing uh <laughs> so far Look, knock on wood, wear some wood at. I haven't had any issues with none of my colors, so I have not had to do any troubleshooting to try to figure that out. So I, I will say a prayer for you and um, hope you get that worked out. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. 
reaching higher. You too. Have a good night. All right. Good night, child. Bye.